Welcome back to Piers Morgan on I'm joined by the journalist and author of the new book, The Power Code, Caddy Kay, Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker on the Daily Mirror's associate editor Kevin Maguire. I want to play a clip. This is from Australian Morning Television today, where the Australian Prime Minister just started to give, have a little pop at me. Take a look at this. And let's talk about the ashes, Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Um, who looks like he could blow over in a stiff breeze. Uh, he's fired up about the ashes. Uh, is it time to revoke the visas of English elites like Piers Morgan? Just get rid of it. Just don't let him come in. That's it. <laughs> well, I, I think that would be a very harsh measure, uh, Carl. What it, what it might be better to do is to allow people like Piers Morgan <laughs> to come in and to come on your show and remind him of Australia's massive Ashes victory, both the men's and the women's team are nailing it over there mm. in the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prime Minister, just for the record, you've won nothing yet. The Ashes are alive and at Headingley tomorrow, it's going to be the Coliseum, the Yorkshire version, and you lot are going down. So I will be on that breakfast show in three or four weeks talking about a thrilling comeback by England to win the Ashes 3-2. And the women are going to win too. So I would just... Put a cork in it, Cobber. Um, right. <laughs> Let's uh, move to our pack. Um, so there's a... I love this story. Transport for London bosses abandoned an advert for a new play in the West End because it features a Victoria sponge cake. And the ad apparently promotes the consumption of high-fat salt and sugar, sugar foods and didn't comply with the organisation's advertising policy. So they've now had to rip it down. This is for a Broadway show, Tony and Tina's Wedding, which has this cake in it. Uh, I don't know where we start with this. Kevin, <laughs> well, when did we say you couldn't have a big cake yeah. as a promo? I know, I know. Look, there's an obesity problem in London, as there is in the UK and much of the world, certainly the developed world. So the ban is on advertising, that's pushers, on healthy foods. I think this is caught. But there's I a think wedding they just cake need in to... the production. Look, I think it's daft. I think they need to tweak the ban... So you can't say buy kicks. Uh, oh please! I mean, so you don't want. I did the show. look. I did my monologue today on these trigger warnings, right? How it's been established that trigger warnings actually trigger people who the warnings are supposed to protect because it reminds them of what they're supposed to be yeah. not thinking Trauma. about, right? I mean, the, Esther, the, we are literally going nuts here with this I, stuff. I, I do think I'm. I'm very curious whether actually there's a link between you know banning ads of, of unhealthy foods and whether people stop consuming them. Right, because I don't Do you think you... anybody looks at a production for a, for a, well, a, a Broadway okay. show which has a poster with two characters on a sponge cake mm -hmm. and they think, I must go and eat a sponge yeah, yeah, cake? Yeah, but, 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 but makers of very sugary and fatty, unhealthy foods would not spend a fortune on advertising if they didn't think it was well, getting us to eat this it. Is, this is a show. I mean, uh, if, there's, if anything, it would make me want to see yeah, oh, the I show agree, as I agree. opposed to All right. actually buying yeah. a cake. Let me bring in Caddy, who's a welcome uh, visitor to Piers Morgan on Censor. So you've done this book, The Power... Uh, power... Well, how, how, what, er code? What is that? The power code. The power code. Oh, the power the, code. The, the it was, you know, long oh, it time runs around, okay. Collins, so uh, More joy, like less eager, maximum impact for women. Mm. Is the problem with all these things, are too many women not in charge or are too many women in charge of these mad decisions? No, I mean, we've stalled at the top of women. We've got only 10% of CEOs are women. Mm. 30 out of the world's 300 countries have women leaders. Women improve the bottom lines of the companies they work for. And so we were trying to look at why are women not progressing? Why have they not got to the top? And one of the things we found is that actually there was a study out of Harvard showing that women don't really want power. They look at power and they think the costs of getting it too high. Power itself seems unappealing. I've met some power crazed women. Yep, though. of course. There, of course there are going to be people, women in power, who love to wield power the old way. What we were looking at is why aren't they progressing and what could you do about power itself to change it to get more women? I mean, if the world was in a wonderful state, we mm. wouldn't have thought you need to change things. But are you, are, you of the belief, are you of the belief that, that if the world was run by women world leaders, we would have less turmoil and war. We haven't got any evidence on that because there haven't been enough women leaders. So um, all of this is, you know, we look at data and research. I'm not going to tell you that if women were running every single country, we wouldn't have wars. But we do know that women, when they run companies, for example, mm. those more women in senior positions at companies improve the bottom line of those companies. They make more profits, which most companies would think is a good thing. So we want more women at the top. You spent uh, 20 years in the mm. States reporting a lot for the BBC, obviously. Um, every week now, it seems to be a story of a corporate a kind of woke corporate campaign, spectacularly backfiring. 
Uh, it started with Gillette after the Me Too campaign, when they suddenly went all every man to Harvey Weinstein till they prove otherwise. Nine billion came off the bottom line. They had to reverse and go back to alpha male advertising. We saw the Budweiser mm -hmm. thing with Dylan Mulvaney, the transgender influencer. Modelo now the biggest selling beer in America because of that. Right. Yeah. Um, and we've seen it with Target, who did a lot of stuff during Pride Month and got attacked by it by its consumer base. Uh, and now we've seen Ben and Jerry's, the ice cream, you know, champions in America, always doing clearly motivated stuff. But they chose Jan July the fourth to launch this campaign to basically guilt trip America about indigenous rights, which is a perfectly legitimate thing. But on July 4th, they actually targeted Mount Rushmore, obviously the four faces, they said, making them out to be a bunch of brazen thieves, when in fact they're four of the great presidents of the United States. I suspect this will backfire. I suspect there'll be a run of campaign against Ben and Jerry's. Where, where is all this going to go? I don't know. I don't know if the Ben and Jerry's case will backfire because Ben and Jerry's have long been known and associated with liberal causes. So mm. I think that people expect it of Ben and mm. Jerry's to some extent. I think CEOs in America, I'm sure you've spoken to them, peers, are increasingly being put in a position perhaps because of failure of politicians to get things done where they're having to take positions on social issues that they don't want to, whether it's immigration, gun control. Mm. Um, you've seen companies take positions on that mm. too. I think it's incredibly awkward Do for CEOs. They, they don't. It? I don't think they can because they're partly because they're client based, but also mostly because they're employee based. Because mm. empl younger That's employees thought, in particular yeah. are pushing CEOs to take these. But this reminds me, Esther, of the uh, conversation I just had with Catherine Burblesing, which is parents and students mm. now driving yeah. the power. We're seeing this now with young employees, I quite agree with you, of these companies, driving them to take very woke positions. Disney had just had this huge yeah. bust up with Ron DeSantis in Florida. I don't think they should be doing any of this stuff. Well, it's a case of the inmates are running the asylum. Because actually, back in the day, you know, as, as arrogant as I think my generation is, we the <laughs> previous generations, you knew that you, could, you have to keep your mouth shut when someone with 20 plus years of experience is speaking, at the very least. Um, but now we have these young people that think they know best. They, they have access to the internet. They know more than everyone else. And I think that's the bigger problem. I don't think it's, it has to do with the consumer base, actually, for these companies, because Kevin? you tend to divide them. Yeah, I, think I, it's, I like it's, it when young people, you know, the new generations challenge the, you know, the older generations. Yeah, I actually think that's good. Yes, you've got to get the decisions right. Now, Ben and, ben and Jerry, I think their marketing is fantastic. They're getting talked about, again, the people who will go and spend their dollars or pounds, wherever you are, euros, on Ben and Jerry's probably like all this. Because we know. It works we know. Now, but yep. what, what if what if they ah. go down the Budweiser yeah. route and? You know, why would you stir? Why, why would you, you stir up division mm. on July the fourth, the day of unity? I mean, look, as a Brit, yeah. I don't, you know, obviously celebrate July the fourth. I think we dropped the ball under old Mad King George, but that's another matter. <laughs> uh, but the idea of a, an American company that's been very successful in America launching this attack on the very idea of July the fourth on July the 4th. But it's an, it's an invented myth idea of July the 4th. It's not the true story well, it's of not. America, they just celebrate, is it? And they just celebrate independence uh, from the Brits. Yeah, but you know really what it boils how, down it, how it was achieved and what went on. You, but look, but it's, it's like, like the, old, the, it's the old Mayflower story, isn't it, which is all a bit... All right, myth. Kelly, before I let you go, who's going to win the election 2024 in America? I think Joe Biden probably wins, but if something happens to him or to the economy mm. a month before the election, I think Donald Trump's the nominee. Well, what a choice. Yeah. Country of 330 million people. How can it be this? Mm. And we're going to have a rerun. Yes. And I was exhausted at the end of the last time. <laughs> I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Uh, the Power Code. <laughs> Terrific book, Caddy Kay and Claire Sherman. Uh, really, I'm going to really enjoy uh, showing this to people <laughs> to see what they think. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you.